August 24, 1944. A massive B-17 bomber stream pierces the skies of Germany. The tide is turning against the Nazis. The Allies strike targets throughout the country with near impunity. Their main target was a complex in the Merseburg area, which involved an armament factory and some chemical plants. The Allied bombers are each packed with a heavy payload. P-51 Mustangs, the most advanced Allied fighter in Europe, provide top cover, ready to take on any fighters that rise to challenge the heavies. But 30,000 feet below, a lethal new threat is lying in wait. Luftwaffe pilot Siegfried Schubert prepares for the most dangerous mission of his life. He is one of the men of JG-400, tasked to fly an experimental interceptor into combat, the rocket-powered ME-163. From Schubert's perspective, he saw an American aerial armada of about 450 B-17s escorted by 120 or more fighters headed towards Merseburg. The, the, the bombers were inbound to the target. Command sounds the alarm. Torpedo, the code word for launch. Schubert's rocket engine ignites. 3,700 pounds of thrust crushes him back in his seat. The comet rapidly reaches 200 miles per hour on the runway. Schubert eases the stick back slightly. The rocket plane lifts into the air. At 200 feet, Schubert ejects his landing gear. A small propeller in the nose generates electric power for the aircraft. Schubert accelerates past 400 miles per hour. When that speed was reached, the pilot honked back on the stick into a dramatic 60 or even 70 degree climb. And with the tremendous amount of thrust that that uh, rocket engine provided, uh, from takeoff to 40,000 feet could be as little as three or three and a half minutes, and nothing on Earth came close to that. Schubert launches into the stratosphere. In just three minutes, his comet is perched nearly 10,000 feet above the incoming bomber stream. The 163s positioned themselves uh, overhead so that they could make a high-speed diving pass, which was their preferred method. Schubert will use a standard comet tactic. He'll climb above the bomber stream, then dive through it, making an attack run. After this first high-speed pass, he'll zoom climb again, bank around, and make a second pass. By this time, the ME-163's fuel will run dry, and he will be forced to return to base. Schubert noses over and dives on the B-17s, accelerating past 500 miles per hour. At nearly three times his enemy's speed, he closes rapidly. The German selects a target. No one inside the bomber is aware that they are being stalked from above. The Comet pilot opens fire. High explosive shells burst inside the B-17's left wing. Schubert zooms past, too fast for any Allied gunner to track him. His victim lurches, dropping out of formation. Now, at that time, Schubert wasn't able to try to keep score. He just knew that he had scored hits. In point of fact, that airplane never returned to base. The comet climbs, circling for another attack. Within seconds, Schubert has a new target in sight. He pitches over. Schubert's heavy cannon pummels another flying fortress. The 
B-17's right outboard engine bursts into flame. That airplane went into an uncontrolled spiral and blew up in midair. So there was no doubt that that was a confirmed kill. After a mere eight minutes of powered flight, Schubert's rocket engine flames out. The German breaks off, having scored two victories in a single sortie. A record for a Comet pilot. Schubert glides back to base, scanning cautiously for Allied fighters. The ME-163 touches down on its belly, a bumpy ride, but one that the tough airframe is designed to take. The mission was brief, but it wreaked great havoc. For stunned American bomber crews, the top secret ME-163 is a terrifying new threat. The design that became the rocket-powered ME-163 started as a glider in the 1930s. The ME-163, stubby little thing with a lot of wing for an airplane that small. And that was really the reason that the 163 was developed in the first place, to test that wing and airframe configuration. But at some point around 1941, some German engineers got the bright idea, suppose we put a rocket engine in this machine and see what that does. The top secret design was meant to supply the Luftwaffe with a cheap, short-range interceptor that could unleash lightning-quick attacks on Allied bombers. An interceptor is a short-range, direct contact weapon with a pilot, and their only mission in life is to take off, engage enemy aircraft, and get back down to the ground. A Valter rocket motor was selected for testing. The engine was a technological marvel. Reaction chemicals were first mixed in a steam generator, which powered the primary fuel pump. This pump drew more reactants from the fuel tanks, carrying them to the combustion chamber, where they were mixed and ignited to produce thrust. The engine's main drawback was the extreme volatility of the fuels. What it was, you had the T-stop and the C-stop configuration. Uh, T-stop was nothing more than a high concentration of hydrogen peroxide. C-stop was a combination of methyl alcohol and hydrazine, hydrate, and water. Separately, in two separate containers, there were harmless compounds. But if you throw those things together pretty quickly, you have an explosion. So the technology issues they faced was, how do you control the explosion with piping in these fuels to get a controlled explosion to create rocket power without killing the pilot and blowing up the aircraft. The first ME-163 Comet prototypes were tested in 1941 at Penamunda. In October of that year, German pilot Heine Dittmar nearly broke the sound barrier, flying his Comet up to 623 miles per hour. They knew after testing by 42, that they would have a very fast interceptor which would reach altitudes of 15,000 feet per minute. In two minutes, it was at operational altitude. But there was a catch. The fuel burned up in only eight minutes. And once expended, the rocket plane turned back into a glider. A sitting duck for enemy fighters. The definitive version of the Comet, the ME-163B, was combat ready by mid-1944. The aircraft was tiny in comparison to other fighters in the air, basically consisting of wings and an engine. It was merely 18 feet in length, roughly half that of a P-51. Both wing routes housed extremely heavy armament, 30-millimeter Rhein-Borsig Mark 108 cannons. A few well-placed shells could knock out a heavy bomber.
On March 16, 1945, pilot Rolf Glogner will take to the skies in this incredible machine. While attacking a formation of B-17s, He'll find out his ME-163 isn't just fast, it can dogfight as well. In a thrilling head-to-head matchup with a British Mosquito, Glogner will pit his Comet in a struggle of life and death. March 16, 1945. JG-400 pilot Rolf Glogner straps into the cockpit of an ME-163 Comet. I was on call, and then on sitting call, where you were inside the cockpit in case things had to happen quickly. The fuel on board is so unstable that Glogner must wear a protective suit. We had for sharp starts had the asbestos combination. We wore asbestos suits and long gloves in case the fuel spilled in an accident. We were completely covered. If the fuel came into contact with your skin, it burned. And normal cloth would have burned immediately. It was dangerous. The corrosive fuel is but one of the many dangers facing the Comet pilot. If he didn't blow up, if he didn't get shot down, and if he didn't die and explode on impact landing, then he had to look forward to doing it all over again. Suddenly, the German flak gunners cease fire. The alarm is sounded. Allied bombers are passing overhead. It's up to the Comets to try to stop them. Glogner lifts off, ejects his landing dolly, accelerates to over 400 miles per hour. Then pulls into a steep 70 degree climb. From start, yeah? From takeoff, it took two minutes to reach combat altitude. 30,000 feet. A standard fighter like the ME-109 would have taken 30 minutes to do that, and the enemy plane would have been long gone by that time. Above the bomber stream, the navigator of a twin-engine RAF Mosquito spots a telltale vapor trail heading his way. Allied pilots have come to dread such a sight. Glogner flies up through the B-17 stream without scoring any hits on the bombers. His focus quickly narrows to the Mosquito passing overhead. On this day, Glogner will see how his ME-163 stacks up in a dogfight. The Mosquito's lightweight wooden frame was powered by twin Rolls-Royce Merlin engines. The aircraft was known for its speed and its hard-hitting combination of 20-millimeter cannon and 30-caliber machine guns. The ME-163 is far faster than the Mosquito and surprisingly maneuverable in a turning fight. But the Mosquito has much better armament and can absorb more punishment. Glogner is here. The Mosquito is here. The Mosquito pilot will turn in to Glogner, hoping to get a shot while the Comet is still in the climb. The Mosquito breaks hard. Glogner eases the stick forward. So, under the body, I flew here, yeah, and I came to Zoo. When I was underneath him, he dropped his wing tanks, and he almost hit me. But they passed right by the tips of my wings. That would have been terrible. I got lucky. Glogner banks left to get onto his enemy's six o'clock. So as he banks and rolls himself, 
he sees the Mosquito pilot trying to turn tight to get him. The engagement has turned into a classic circling fight. Both pilots turn as tight as their planes allow. But I had the ME-163 and it was so agile. So that's how I was able to shoot him. I shot the right engine and then it went down and disappeared. I didn't follow him because to me, he was finished. Just then, Glogner's fuel runs dry. He won't get the chance to attack any bombers. And with more Allied fighters in the air, survival becomes top priority. Glogner glides back to base. All the Papa pilots began their training in gliders. And therefore, when a 163 pilot took off and had burned that seven or eight minutes of uh, rocket fuel getting to altitude, Every takeoff meant it was going to be an unpowered landing, and therefore the early glider training that each pilot had was a definite benefit. Glogner safely belly lands the comet, having scored a rare fighter kill for the rocket interceptor. The comet went on to shoot down a total of 16 aircraft. Its main achievement was instilling a sense of fear of German technology in the minds of Allied pilots. They just did not know what else was out there. If, if, if they had the 262 jet, now they have this thing here, what else do we have to look forward to? What other nightmares are waiting for us? But despite all this, the ME-163 program proved a military failure. The problem was, it was not really a viable weapon, because so few were ever available at any time. They were complex and dangerous to operate. The ME-163 program has a unique distinction of having killed more pilots in training than they did in combat. Even Siegfried Schubert, the most successful Comet pilot, was not immune from the risk of flying the ME-163. Schubert continued flying uh, Comet missions until October, about two months after his record-setting uh, two-victory day. But that month, he was getting ready to launch in another Comet when apparently uh, the fuel exploded and he was killed in the detonation. Regardless of the danger, there was never a shortage of volunteers ready to take the rocket planes into battle. They were willing to sacrifice their lives, if necessary, to protect their home country.